On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we're out in the new truck, out in the Limited, and we're going to get a new car for you guys. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho, and like I said, today we are out in the new truck, heading to grab the trailer right now and make a quick run up to Kansas City to get a car that is kind of a holy grail. One of, it, it's just insanely rare. That's basically all I need to say so far. You guys have already seen it on the title, of course, but it is one of Chevrolet's official pace cars. Here you go, guys. Real time backing up to the trailer. This is something I'm very excited about. Obviously, I don't think we need the pro trailer backup assist, but this new camera system should be pretty cool. So we're roughly, in the zone of that trailer here. Put this thing in reverse. It should just switch right over and line up our lines. The old one did this, of course, but the new one with the pro trailer backup should be even better. It's really hard to get to this trailer. There's only 10 foot in front of you. Okay. Now, yeah, hit the plus button. <laughs> oh, that was pretty cool. You still suck at this. All right. That took a whole 30 seconds. Obviously, we're in a rush. We don't have a lot of daylight left. And the guy we're buying this from is one of the flakiest people I've ever heard. I'll tell you guys the whole story as we head on down the road. Let's check tires. Those sound good. Those sound like drums. That one sounds a little weak, but let's go. So I have to take you guys on the journey of buying this car. Like I said, of course, it's just a, a marketplace deal, which is, they've been nightmares a lot lately. Um, something's always wrong. Like you get there and they made up everything about the car, which is fine. Like if they were lying about that, that's one thing, but then there's no title and you know, the title's missigned if they have it, it's already been signed, so the title's trash. And they're like, no, it's totally fine, but they don't know anything about cars. So that's been happening a lot lately. All Rivians, that was a whole truck of Rivian R1Ss. That was cool. All right, so I, uh, I hit him with all the usual questions. I, I started the way I always do, I come in strong, and I was like, I'll take this, I'll send you a deposit right now, I'll pick up Monday, no questions asked the right way to do a messenger conversation. I don't have any other stupid questions to ask. I just come with money and we make a deal happen. So he didn't respond. I was like, bump, $2,000 Monday. Tell me when to be there. And then we doing this. And then finally, two days later, he gets back to me with, okay, yes, that will be fine. How will you send a deposit? And uh, then, you know, all of a sudden he's like freaking out. Like I got a fish on the line. So he starts with, uh, so these are all seconds apart. Sorry, my phone's been off for a minute, minute. Please get back to me as soon as possible. Within one minute, I said, PayPal? That's fine, how much, question mark. <laughs> and like, I mean, a book. He sent me a book right there. Uh, just give me the money, give me the money, give me the money, which instantly led me to, this deal is bad and very sketchy. So he said, you know, I've got tons of people lined up to buy it. And he probably does, I have no doubt. This is a car that probably everybody wants. This would be the king of the Radwood Festival. So uh, I was like, of course I want the car. I need a guarantee. Do you have a picture of the title? I don't have a picture of the title. I'll give you the address where the car is. Nonsense. It just gets worse. It gets worse. I said, all right, I've got cash ready to go. I'm going to hook the trailer up and head there right now. Do you have the title? And he said, yes, I've got the title. Lie. It's such a lie right there. I was like, how is it signed? Is it in your name? I can't tell you how many cars I buy a year and find out they have bad titles. And of course, right then it's no, it's in the owner's name. She is currently in jail and she's having me sell it to bond out. <laughs> all right, now we're all having a good time, right? I was like, ah, fine, I don't care. Like I said, we need this car for the channel. Like we buy, I buy these cars for you guys. So we're gonna make the deal no matter what. And at the end of it, we'll see if we can sell it by that point. So anyway, I was like, as long as it's not signed wrong, we're good. And then it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I was like, can you meet me tonight? No, it's not signed wrong. Where can I meet you? And he was like, I found out the title's in her storage unit and she's in jail, so we cannot get it. <laughs> so then <laughs> it's, uh, how about this? You can come grab it right now for $1,000. And when she gets out of jail, 
uh, send me the other thousand, you're gonna have the title. Look guys, we're not getting a title and there's a chance we're getting a car. I mean, at this point, I think we've got 100%, I'm gonna take that back, we've got a 75% chance we're getting a car tonight and we're never getting a title for the car. So we'll, I'll send it off to some friend, we'll have him mechanics lean it, hide it for six months, 10 months, and we'll end up getting a title that way. We can force a title on the car. So anyway, I said that works for me. He said bet, and I said where, and he finally sent the address. That's the third or fourth time I asked for the address. Finally sent it. He said, I'll meet you there with the keys. Can you PayPal me $500? I was like, absolutely not. I am not sending you 500 right now. And he said 200, I was like, I told you 100 in the beginning, 100. And he said 150 and I sent it. So I'm already at 150 bucks and we're out a full trip to Kansas City no matter what. And we've got cash for him. I brought him all the cash, honestly. But we're going to get this car, it's gonna be exciting. And this is how most of these deals go down. It's a nightmare to buy and sell cars these days. No one has a dollar when you're selling the cars. Like you just can't sell them. And I'm selling good fixed cars. I'm selling projects. No one comes through to buy those things. And buying the cars is, it's this bad almost every time. So anyway, he finally said, uh, you know, I, I sent the money. I said, I'll be there in three hours. He said, let me know when you get there. I'll be posted up with the car. So we brought protection because it just seemed a little sketchy. It seems very sketchy. And he said, let me know when you're halfway. We're about, we're, we're close to halfway now. We'll be there shortly. We better be coming home with a car. Like, I did my part of the deal. This, this was my part of the deal. He just has to do his part. In a few minutes, we all find out together whether there's a car or not. And if not, this is still a video because I still came to get it and I'll show you guys all the pictures of the car. I'm pretty excited about this. This is a 1990 Beretta, which was the official pace car for the Indy 500, like I said, and they made a handful of these cars. Now I'll even, I've got a poster for it, I think, from back in the day. I'll throw that on screen right now, all the pictures of it. It has the seats, the seats are crazy rare. I mean, this is probably the only one you guys have ever seen. It's definitely the only one I've ever seen. There's one that runs around my town and it's fake. It's uh, people like make the decals all the time and try to, you know, act like they have one of these, but they're rare. So I'm excited to have one. And uh, if we can make it run and drive and possibly legally sell the car, that would be really cool. Let's go get it. That's what we need to know. That, asking the important questions here. Why is she in jail and why are we helping her bond out today? Why don't we just bond her out? We should go to the jail and get her out. <laughs> that way this car was her get out of jail free car. What the heck? Are they, oh, it's that low. Oh yeah, the lake's completely empty. It's just mud and trees. Lake Mead over here. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's go for a walk. We'll get a couple million views if we walk around Lake Mead. What if she went to jail for Grand Theft Auto? What if it's a stolen car? Then we ain't getting no title. When we get there, I'll do the NCIB VIN check like I always do. I have told you guys this before in many videos check the car to see if it's stolen while you're standing there. So it's like, just Google NCIB VIN check, type in the VIN, that gets you close. And if you have a friend that's, you know, on a police force, text them the VIN too, and have them check for any, like, NCIB is a little slow. So they can check for the most recent data and make sure you're good. But make sure the car is not stolen before you take it home. That is good advice. That's all I can tell you. Well, the car does exist. And it actually looks really good. How are you gonna do that? Uh, I assume we're just gonna push. It's really clean, like super clean. If this really just needs a fuel pump, it's awesome. Well, after 30 to 45 minutes of standing in the freezing cold, we have now confirmed that the seller is a huge scam artist and stole my money. And he was not able to actually sell the car. Although all of his facts were right and he used to live right beside the car. So, all right, we gotta, we gotta stop. This is a heck of an explanation to hit you guys with. We showed up to the place where the car is and the guy that has the car is the address that the seller gave me. Showed up there and basically the lady across the street owned the car. She's the one that went to jail. There no names in here, none of this matters. Like, I can explain this uh, tangentially for you guys. But basically, this lady here, this house, she went to jail. She owned the car, that's why it was in beautiful shape. It's been in the garage at that house its whole life. So anyway, some things happened, like some family things, and the car moved across the street to this other guy. Really cool guy, building the truck. We talked to him for a while. And basically, he is the only person allowed to release the car. He has the car, he has the keys, and that's basically all that matters right now. But 
the seller is correct. The title isn't a storage unit and no one really knows where it's at because the actual, the real seller, the owner uh, is unable to make a deal happen right now. She's, she's incarcerated. So we went through all that. We talked to the seller's old roommate because he had just moved out and has no service on his phone. <laughs> So uh, that just, we couldn't get in touch with him, but the old roommate was able to get in touch with his girlfriend and they were like telling us about how they were allowed to sell the car and then they were allowed to take like $500 out of the deal. And they had gone down to $1,000. So the lady that needs the money couldn't have any of it. Like th it was insane. So anyway, we went through all of that and we talked to everyone forever and they were all trying to kind of get it resolved because Obviously, like they do want to sell the car. Even the guy who has the car at his house wants to let it go because uh, it wasn't supposed to stay there. It was just like a temporary storage thing. So at the end of it all, he was like, it's not going to leave here without either the actual owner saying it's OK or I think her brother or something like that. Like the, the other guy that's the most familiar with the situation. And that is where we ended up is that we cannot take the car. And he had some other cars that we almost considered taking, like some cool stuff that he said he'd sell. But I came for the Beretta. I really wanted the Beretta. And my money's gone. There's there's probably no getting that back for sure. Because that guy, obviously, he bailed. He wouldn't show up. And then I heard, like, at the beginning of it, she was like, well, it says he's out buying a car. <laughs> he took my money and he's out buying a car. <laughs> Good thing I didn't give him much money because he tried so hard. I think at one point he even asked for a thousand and then he asked for 500 and I was like, no. And then 200, I said, 100 is it. I don't need to give you any more than that. Like this isn't a real, this isn't a big money deal. There's no reason for you to have to like go out of your way to hold the car. A hundred is it. And I gave him 150, 150 is gone. So in honor of him stealing my money, we're going to go eat barbecue and spend 150 bucks at the barbecue restaurant. That's how it works, right? Sure. Eric says I owe him for not, he had, he had deer to get today. But instead I wasted 18 hours of my life. <laughs> that you number keeps growing. Blame the Facebook seller <laughs> that every time the number goes up by two to three hours. How come Facebook has be, became the new Craigslist? Dude, that is the scammiest deal I've ever encountered in my life. I was expecting him to just be like, that guy doesn't exist and he has no reason to, ha you know, sell the car at all. But well, no, he was like tangentially connected to the deal and tried to insert himself and steal the lady's money. I uh, just messaged, so I'm trying to buy the Beretta right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gotta delete her name. Uh, so, sorry. The girlfriend has the car listed too, <laughs> and Eric is messaging the girlfriend trying to buy the car. <laughs> Please offer them. Be like, uh, I'd like to come buy it now. Uh, is there any way I could PayPal you? A thousand dollars. I'm just gonna hold up that picture of the money we have and send it and be like, I'll give you all of this. <laughs> and I'll probably think it's seven thousand dollars. You guys, I tried so hard to make this happen. The other lady that's familiar with the deal and is the one that is going to have the title shortly, supposedly. Uh, I was like, look, I actually brought like the whole two grand and if we need to go get a little bit more money, like whatever it takes, I'll buy this car. It's a cool car. It's a cool car and it will probably bring fifteen thousand on bring a trailer. But Whatever, it, it's uh, it's just not gonna happen today. We spent so long trying to negotiate our way into it. Um, you know, cause I'll make it right. I don't care about scammy guy that much, but I definitely got scammed. It happens. I did everything I could to prevent it. it. It felt sketchy top to bottom, but it was one of those deals where you have to go. Like this is a real 1990 Beretta Indy Pace car and it's perfect. Garaged all its life. The interior was flawless. Like the floor mats were clean. This car was nice. So I feel bad walking away from it. Uh, I have everyone's numbers. Shout out to everyone there. Like everyone that lives around the car and is allowed to sell the car. All great. Like those people tried everything they could to, uh, you know, make it right. And they were like, Look, we just can't let the car go. We will have the title eventually. Here's our numbers. Call mm -hmm. us and don't ever talk to that guy again, basically. So that's. That's where we ended up. I love, it started out as, no, 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 he'd never do that. He'd never do that. He, yeah, for sure. He, he, definitely, he stole from he you. He definitely he took your money he and he's also stealing everyone else's like, money. I'm like, just don't lie. All the neighbors were cool and really tight. And it's this, actually probably the smartest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the guy, the I, guy uh, joined into the neighborhood unit and then started trying to rob I'm people. just gonna sell everyone's cars in my neighborhood <laughs> and I'm gonna take deposits on all of them. Yes. Send you to the house and I'll never be there. Yeah. Uh, you should probably, if you're going to do this, 
make a fake Facebook account. Yes, that that's the, that's the starting point. And probably a computer that is used somewhere not in your home. You should always use it in the, like a different place that's, you know, not your house. Yeah, possibly a, a VPN, maybe the, the Tor network. And probably stop after a limited time, you know, take a break for a while so you don't get caught. Everyone gets greedy. Everyone gets greedy. Oh, and there's one more important thing to note here. Uh, take a lot more than 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Minimum $500 deposits. Yeah. This is not a lesson on how to scam. What not to do. What not to do. He could have done so much more. I think he nailed it. Yeah, he got 150 bucks. I and guess I'm that. A, and I'm older now. So I'm not happy. Yeah. 21 <laughs> hours older? Uh, yeah. Maybe say that. We paid for his McDonald's for Pretty much have to get rid of the limited now. It's pretty used. <laughs> Move on to the next diesel. <laughs> oh well, I wanted to pull the trailer around. We almost took some motorcycles home and almost took a Jeep home just to fill the trailer up. Yeah, this is the most expensive non motors Jeep I've ever had. Oh, yeah, it needed an engine, and I and it honestly, it's not worth that engine's a boat anchor. It was a 4.2 Jeep, not a 4.0 Jeep. Yeah. She hasn't answered me yet. <laughs> how did that kid not answer, or how did he answer you all day with? He has no, it turned into, oh, he doesn't have any cell phones. The service. first thing he said to me was, I just got my phone back. And I think it's because he only has a phone when he's on Wi-Fi. Like he can't afford a phone bill. I guess I paid his phone bill, so maybe he'll start responding. Nah, dude, he's, he's buying probably that Beretta right now. <laughs> so do you think that he got every, he probably got a hundred people. If he got a ticket or, you know, say a hundred people gave him. 100 bucks to 500 bucks right right, right. so he's about to buy that beretta for seven grand he's out there taking deposits from all y'all it's really easy to find the car i'm not going to link it i'm not going to say any names um it's pretty easy to add all this up and you'll figure it out there's no reason to go after anybody that has the car just saying those people are all great scam artists not great at least we get good barbecue out of the deal that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch JRGO.com for cool shirts. Not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. It was basically a GoFundMe. It was, it was his GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. was stealing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to use the website. He can just have donations. <laughs> uh, we're getting 16.7 miles a gallon pulling the trailer at 85 mile an hour. Uh, people are always like, why don't you hide your speedometer? Uh, because the speed limit's 75, so I'm not speeding at all. Like, I'm not going to get pulled over at 84. I do set the, I set it at 9. Everyone knows it's like, what is it? 9, you're fine. 10, you're fine. That's what it is. So I, there's no reason to hide a speedometer unless you're doing like 180, which this there's truck... pretty much no cops in Kansas City that care about traffic. They're yeah. too busy doing other yeah, things. Yeah, Kansas City's cops are busy. Yeah, they're busy. They're doing real things. I think there's just a lot of people from areas where speed limits aren't 75, but we drive like Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma, 75 all through, and then 80 to 85 in Texas is the speed limit. Thank you, Texas. Love you for that one. All is right in the world again. We're at Q39, getting some dinner. Although the Escalade probably would have had a new engine today if we would have been home. Oh well, coming soon. Like, <laughs> excuse me. Keep that in there. Keep I like that. that. Yeah. Good cut. Good cut. Good cut. <laughs>